Israel steps up its attacks on Gaza, as well as further airstrikes, artillery cannon are shelling the Palestinian territory. The government may consider injecting more cash into Britain's banking system. Andy Murray makes a winning start to the new year by beating the world number one, Rafael Nadal. And the nation waits to see who's going to be the next Doctor Who. Hello, good evening. Israeli air and naval forces have continued to bomb and shell targets in Gaza as the offensive against Hamas enters its second week. Around 10,000 troops are now massed on the border and Palestinian militants have continued firing more rockets into Israel. Here, Gordon Brown has called on the Israeli Prime Minister for an immediate ceasefire. But President Bush has blamed the conflict in Gaza firmly on Hamas. Katya Adler reports from Jerusalem. Day eight of Israel's bombardment of the Gaza Strip. It's relentless. The people of Gaza say their lives, miserable before, have become desperate. Israel says it's targeting the Islamist movement Hamas here. President Bush, in his weekly radio address, blamed the Islamic movement for what's happening in Gaza. This recent outburst of violence was instigated by Hamas, a Palestinian terrorist group supported by Iran and Syria that calls for Israel's destruction. 18 months ago, Hamas took over the Gaza Strip in a coup, and since then has imported thousands of guns and rockets and mortars. But Gaza is one of the most crowded territories in the world. Hamas is surrounded by ordinary civilians. Neither side shows any sign of backing down, and here in Israel, people are beginning to ask questions. What exactly has been achieved? What can still be achieved? And at what price? Today, a long-range rocket crashed into this house in the Israeli city of Ashkelon. Israel's plan was to stop the rockets. Still, its military insists its campaign is going according to plan and that it will launch a ground offensive if necessary. We do see signs of Hamas weaken. However, he still has some launching capabilities. As we saw, he has long-range or improved grad uh, in order to launch them to Israel. So we are not there yet. Uh, that's why we need more time in order to hit all the, all the infrastructure of Hamas. Pressure is building to stop the bloodshed in Gaza. This is a protest by Palestinians living in Israel. There are more demonstrations around the world. But Israel insists it needs time to achieve its goals. Katia Adler, BBC News, Jerusalem. Our correspondent, Lise Doucette, is on the border between Gaza and Israel. And Lise, how does the situation look tonight? Well, it looks pretty ominous, uh, Peter, because I can say that since uh, night fell here in this area of southern Israel, close to the Gaza border, the lights that you see behind me mark uh, the entrance into Gaza. We've seen a build-up of Israeli armour and artillery and troops uh, close to that approach uh, to the Gaza Strip. And also, just at dusk, uh, we saw and heard for the first time since Israel began its military operations eight days ago, Israeli artillery cannons shelling positions inside the Gaza Strip. So an intensification, too, of all of the activities around here. The Israeli warplanes have been in the skies throughout the day. There's been the constant thud, the pounding of positions inside the Gaza Strip, hitting homes and buildings that Israel says are being used by Hamas as weapons depots. Throughout the day, too, the towns and villages across southern Israel have been coming under attack. From here, we can see the rockets being fired from positions inside the Gaza Strip, being launched against southern Israel. And Israel's made it absolutely clear while those rocket attacks go on, so will its military operations. We're seeing clear signs here of an escalation of Israel's military operations, creating uh, the impression that a ground operation could not be far away. Lise Doucette on the Israel-Gaza border. Demonstrations against the violence in Gaza have been taking place in the Middle East and here in the UK. Up to 10,000 protesters gathered in London and marched towards Trafalgar Square. In Manchester, 2,000 people marched and there were hundreds more in Edinburgh, Glasgow, Portsmouth and elsewhere around the country. 
A further cash injection for banks is being considered by the government among a range of measures designed to soften the impact of the downturn. The BBC has learned that there are concerns within the Treasury that at least one institution may need help in order to increase its lending to borrowers. Here's our political correspondent David Thompson. And David, what's behind this sudden concern that enough may not have been done already for the banks? Well, what we know so far is that, in effect, that no decisions have been taken yet, that nothing's been ruled in, nothing's been ruled out, and that nothing's on the table, nothing's off the table. What we have also learned, however, is from a very senior tre Treasury source, is that there is concern there that at least one banking institution may not have enough at the moment to lend uh, as much money as, they would like, as the government would like in the longer term. Now, if the government were to consider uh, another financial injection into the banks, it would have two political problems. One is that there's already a great deal of public anger about the money given to the banks, and that would cause it problems, problems at polling time. And, of course, the second issue is it would allow the, the, the opposition parties to attack the government and say it's plan A didn't work, if you like, and it's throwing more money into the banks. But very briefly, David, is there any suggestion that we're in for another banking shock? No, none whatsoever. We should be very, very clear about that. This isn't talking about the short term. This is talking about the bigger picture. And what the government want to do is just make sure that the government get that, that, sorry, that the banks get back lending again, and that hopefully the economy gets kick-started and moved on. David, thank you very much. David Thompson. Police have confirmed that three people were killed when their light aircraft crashed next to one of Britain's busiest railway lines yesterday. 35-year-old Nick O'Brien, his 29-year-old wife Emma and the pilot Alan Matthews died when the plane came down on power lines in Staffordshire. Train services between Rugby and Stafford remain suspended. Tennis now, and Andy Murray has continued his excellent start to the new year by winning the World Championship in Abu Dhabi. Having beaten Roger Federer in the semi-final, Murray beat world number one Rafael Nadal in this afternoon's final. Oli Foster reports. The World Tennis Championship is too grand a title for this three-day tournament. Andy Murray and five other top ten players lured to Abu Dhabi by massive appearance fees and a winner's cheque of $250,000. Murray seemed to want it much more against Rafael Nadal. He came up with all the shots against the world number one, taking the first set 6-4. Oh. The last time these two met was in the US Open semi-finals. Murray won that day, and though this was a glorified exhibition match, it was no less competitive. The Spaniard levelled the match by taking the second set 7-5, and in the third, they really put on a show with rallies that would grace a Grand Slam final as the stadium erupted with appreciation time after time. Oh, unbelievable! Stop it! In clinching the decider, Murray's now beaten Roger Federer and Nadal in the same tournament for the first time. So as a taster for what he can achieve in 2009, this was far from meaningless. Oli Foster, BBC News. Months of feverish speculation by Doctor Who fans will soon be over. Later this evening, it'll be revealed who will be replacing David Tennant as the 11th Doctor. Our entertainment correspondent, Lizo Mazimba, reports. After David Tennant makes his final appearance as the Doctor, it's no exaggeration to say that this is how many fans will regard him. Oh, the stuff of legend. Tennant himself says his successor has an amazing journey ahead. I am very jealous of... The chap who's coming next, who's got all this extraordinary journey to look forward to, um, and everything that's about to unfold and the way his life is about to change in so many ways. And that appears to rule out a female Time Lord, despite Catherine Zeta-Jones being one of two performers recently singled out by current head writer Russell T Davis as potential doctors, the other being History Boys actor Russell Tovey. Other performers being tipped include Chiwetel Ejiofor, seen here in an adaptation of the Canterbury Tales. I wrote a letter to you. It was about me. Survivor star Patterson Joseph. You can travel with me for a while if you want. Obviously, you're not safe driving yourself, so. And the relatively unknown Matt Smith, seen here with Doctor Who star Billy Piper in The Ruby in the Smoke. Let's have a look at his letter of yours. Which letter? Give me some credit. David Tennant is the tenth of several actors to play the Doctor. Fans will be thrilled to know that they'll soon learn the identity of who he'll be regenerating into. Lisa Mazimba, BBC News. That's it for now. There'll be more from the newsroom at 9.50 on BBC One. Now, though, it's time to join our news teams where you are. <laughs>